right, hello everyone. So this is going to be a stream VOD, but we're going to try to make this also a quick second channel discussion. So yes, we are back in Splatoon 2. Other than the fact that we'll do a video here at one point, we are going to talk a little bit about zones in Splatoon 2. And I'm going to try to just be honest about why Splat Zones does not work in Splatoon 3. So let's actually switch off this weapon. Let's look at a very fun weapon you guys probably remember. Ah, the custom jet sculpture. The evil of this game. The worst thing to fight, the Rainmaker Breaker. Well, yeah, known by many, many names. And we can take one of our favorite Splatoon 2 stages here. And now, the stage design between Splatoon 2 and 3 hasn't changed too much. You know, they're pretty similar overall designs. But Splatoon 2 worked pretty well for zones. I think zones only at the end of Splatoon 2 is fun. So, what's something that allowed Splatoon 2 zones to work? Well, as much as I hate this special, and I hate missile, this? This kind of let zones work, you know? You right here, the other team has to move, one of them probably dies, and then your team walks forward, they paint the square, and then the other team does it, they get their own stingray, and you repeat the process over and over again. Now, why is it like this? Why do people do this in the first place? Well, the reason we had to do this in Splatoon 2 is because the maps weren't great. Also because the specials were broken at that, but also because of the maps. So let's take a look at one of the worst Splat Zones maps in Splatoon 2. This is Kelp Dome Splat Zones. This is a pretty terrible map. As you can see, there's a bit of a limitation on where you can go. So you have one route that is not a one-way drop. This is a one-way drop. The grates don't count. You have too little mobility. So you have this part of the map that you go through. This is your only way to go to mid that is a one-way. Uh, like, or that is not a one-way. The other thing that you can do is you can go this right route. And this right route is the one good part about this map. Because you have this flank. Now this is a bad flank. It's a one way, it puts you in a small area. But you're completely on the other side of the map once you get here. So at the very least, once you appear on this side of the map, you get to have an impact because you split the enemies. If they're holding mid, they have to watch out for the drop here, they have to watch out for here, and they have to watch out for here. If it's here and here, then this map is terrible because like, all you have to do is turn slightly left and right on top mid and it's literally free. But when you have to turn here, it becomes too much. So with that being said, let's open another map in Splatoon 3 that is totally not going to be related to Kelp Dome in any way, shape, or form. Nope, this is a completely different map with no inspiration from Kelp Dome at all. Has nothing similar to it, I promise. Uh, and here you go. Guys, you can open your, your eyes. Splatoon 2 is gone, okay? It's gone. You can open your eyes. It's okay. It's gone. Anyway, welcome, welcome back to the present day. Also, thank you for the sub, Luca. Welcome back to the present day, everybody. We made it. Let's take a look at this map called Splat Zone Scorch Gorge. You know? And just for fun, let, let's compare it with Kelp Dome. Remember, Kelp Dome, one of the worst maps in Splatoon 2. One of the worst zones maps in that game. Now, on this map, the main problem is that there's a bunch of one-way drops to get into mid. Except this time, uh, you know how there was a left route that wasn't a one-way? Uh, yeah, it's, it, and the grades don't count. The grades are still terrible. Uh, now there's no one-way. And you know how Kelp Dome at least had that one good flank that went far behind the enemies? Uh, no, doesn't do that anymore. So, if someone stands up here... Remember how I said, like, being able to turn here to here is too easy? Uh, I can see everything now. Yeah, except this time, there's there's no way to come from here. Nobody comes from this side. You have to go here. So, if you go up here... Yeah, fun times. Fun times with that. Chargers, crab, whatever. And there's another thing to keep in mind. Remember how I just said Stingray and Missiles, as horrible as they were... Those crutches kind of enabled us to get by on those maps. Because, like, if you had a ray and someone was up there, you just ray top mid. No more person top mid. It's easy. Just like that. 
Well, in this game, missiles are expensive and you can't get them as reliably. And there's no Stingray. So, okay. We don't have any angles and we don't have any way to move the enemies for free. But, it, but it's okay, because we have Zip Caster, right? We have Zip Caster. This is good at moving the map, right? You can zip and get an angle and... Oh, shit, I can't affect the objective. Aw, oh, fuck, I didn't kill anyone. Uh-oh. Oh, well, that didn't really work. Uh, now, now, Inkjet's kind of the same thing. If you Inkjet, you, you can get an angle. But because it's zones, you don't really have to fight them. They don't really affect the objective, so it's not really that bad. It's pretty simple. So, my question is, with all of that taken into account, how the fuck does zones work in this game? How do we fix this problem? Well, I'll tell you how. I'll tell you how. We can look at a different map. We can look at a good map. Yeah, no, the answer is not to bring back Ray. The answer is to make maps that look like this. Now, what, what specifically in this map design makes zones an actual mode? What, what changes? So, my point with going back to Splatoon 2 is not to say, let's bring back Ray and Missile Guys. My point is to say, Splatoon 2 and 3 have very similar map designs. 3 is better in some attributes and worse than others and somewhat that, but they're very similar. But Splatoon 2 got by because it had crutches to make up for the map design. You just had shit special design as well, and therefore it got by. But if you get rid of the crutches, then the mode feels way worse. But you still need to get rid of the crutches. We still have to rip off the band-aid that is Stingray. We can't keep it there. We have to get rid of it. It has to come off. Arissa, thank you for the prime sub. So when you rip the band-aid off, what you have to do is we have to go back to doing things right. We have to do Splatoon with good maps. So why does maps like this work? Let's say I'm the defending team and I have control of the zones. If you're the defending team on zones, you want to go here, you know? From here, you can stop this flank, you can watch this ramp, and you can watch this wall. This is the spot, like, you would see crabs go here, or a charger go here, or a splat leg, or even mid-range stuff would go by this wall. You know? That's where you fight to go. You want to get this kind of spot. Maybe up here sometimes. Now... If you do that, and we go up here, and, you know, we look for it. See how I can't see the other side of the map at all? Like, you see how there's multiple flanks I literally can't see? And even if I can, if I turn over here... This is Jet Squelcher range. Like, the charge slash is about Jet Squelcher range. A little bit more, even. I can't even hit the first flank. The first flank is here. It's going from here... And then going behind the enemies. I can't even hit there from there. And if I stand here to cover this flank and make this approach option easier, I still can't cover this flank. The one right here. I can't cover this side. And then if they get here, then the, like, the attackers can just walk here and then give jumps. And then there's people here. And then you're screwed as the defenders. It's like the defenders in zones need to keep the enemy team in front of them. That's how you win zones. You keep the enemy team in front but to do that here, well, you gotta have a guy, you know, kind of ready to watch, like here, able to cover both flanks. You want to have someone over here, and then you have someone on the wall. It makes it so the enemy team splits up, and it makes specials that wall out space less powerful. And it also means that the attacking team has options. While all these flanks are going off, you now get to take advantage of more specials. Things like Tri-Strike become a lot more valuable on a map like this. And it doesn't just have to be Flounder. It can even be a little bit smaller. It doesn't have to be this much. Let's take a look at Museum. <coughs> if we get to Museum right here. Now, Museum doesn't have the same amount of flanks, but what it has is this. This is a fast drop that puts you in good terrain. You see how on zones you have this, like, low ground here, this part of the map? This is really good stage design, because what it means is I can drop here as a short-range weapon and then just try to break over here. And if they have, like, a long-range thing on top mid, they have a very small window to hit me. Once I drop behind this wall, I'm safe. Someone short-range has to walk all the way over here and go deal with me. 
I have to go all the way over here. Mako Mart also... No, Mako Mart is not one of them. I will get to Mako Mart. Mako Mart's good, but it's not that good. Um, so there's this part. And especially it contrasts because the enemy team wants to go here. This is the spot the enemy team wants to go. Now, obviously, as a defender, getting back to your plat and then getting to this left side isn't too hard. But the point is, like, the defending team gets forced over here. So when they're over here, this becomes a better flank. Because people are further and further away. So now you get to go to this side. So this flank opens the map. It's not perfect. What old museum had is this, like, you could go here and you could jump across. So this made this flank better, but it also meant if you took the left side, instead of only being able to walk in a mid, you could go left and go around. So that's really important. Let's add a weight. Okay. So the old museum also had this part, which made the- not only did it make this flank better because it's less committal, but it also meant you could push this side. So what this flank meant in spot one is if you defended and you got the left part of your plat here, like if you defended the normal way and you took left instead of doing the big flank, you can then go here, have some people focus zones, and then someone else gets to walk over here on this flank and they get to jump across. But you can't do that anymore. So the problem is if you retake flank on left, you still have to walk through one way. So that becomes harder. That's why the map is worse. That's how museum works. Now let's talk about a stage that's part way there and why these stages are worse in this meta. To do that, we need to bring out our favorite meta special right now. The crab. We gotta talk about crab. So I'm gonna bring up Mako, Mart, and Hagglefish. Because Mako and Hagglefish are maps that are very close to being good, but they're not quite there. So, if we go to Mako Mart, right? Go to Mako. We let's get our crab tank here. So, Mako Mart has more options to move in. It has a one way, but still you can back off here. This isn't the worst one way in the world. You can still kind of come back. Uh, the main problem with the right side is that, I mean, either you just converge in mid anyway. But if you go right here, this spot's really bad. Like, you can't really do too much from here other than try to sneak behind. It's still here as, like, a potential sneaky route, but think about it. Like, once you drop here, it's like... Now you're in a valuable flank. That's a long time, especially in Splatoon. That's a long time. And especially when you're contesting, like, a charger. The charger just looks left and the charger just gets a free kill. It's easy. The other option would be to push your stack. This is the main spot, like, actual good teams will push. They'll push to this spot of the map most of the time. Because you have more cover here. So you kind of, like, push up to here. Then you go here. Then you go on the stack. You send one guy over there where the burst bombs are. And you get up here. The problem is that these roots are all still ahead of someone. Like, if I'm here, and I pop my crab, like, I still have to turn a little bit. Like, I don't have to turn that much. Like, I can very easily go and use 90s and stuff, or chargers can turn. How would I fix this? Uh, Mako Mart's spawn should extend to drop you here. If it can drop you here, then you just push like this, and then you're on the stack. Or, like, if you do it longer, you're over here. It's way better route. But you need to, like, make that less short. I'll show that off when I do my map reworks, by the way, though. But, uh, this, this part is the problem. This route isn't good enough. The left route is fine, but it's the only route. But extending it right so you go here, like, this is now much more extended. It's very similar to the right side of Reef and how that let you get around the bridge. It is the exact same concept. Like, having a drop here, like, you just shoot, you poke people. You can even, like... Long range stuff could even poke this staff. And then you just send a front to go over here. That's what you want. And Hagglefish is the same problem. Hagglefish and Mako Mart are very similar. It's just a flatter uh, Mako, but they're they're very uh, They're very similar, which is Hagglefish does the roots thing well. This is why Hagglefish is way better of a stage than people think. Because Haggle does have the roots. Like, they exist. 
They're not amazing roots, particularly the right root here. This one isn't great, but like they're still there. You still have to think about if someone goes there. You know, like, you still have to worry about someone walking over here, even if this is, like, slow as shit. And, like, if you can get behind people, then this map is great. Like, getting behind people is what makes it good. So why does it feel worse in this meta? The reason it feels worse in this meta is because with crabs, you can just watch both ways. I am covering zone. I am shooting the flank. I can hit that, by the way. I can hit all the way over here. I can paint the enemy side of zone. By the way, good luck killing me up here with 500 HP. Yeah, this map is better on tower. This is why this is why other modes work better, and that's kind of what I want to wrap up on. So why why do other modes do this better? Let's talk about tower. Now tower has a lot of problems. Tower is the second worst uh, mode in the game because of the special advantage being bad. But crap, I mean sorry, tower does one thing that really helps with these maps. They, it does a really good thing for the maps that kind of saves it from being worse than zones right now. So, remember how we established before how the sides aren't that great because of how the enemy team wants to position? When I take the, cr the tower, at least one person, but generally the whole team, rotates all the way over here. Exactly, what Melo said. It's like, now, if the enemy team is now positioning, like, here... Then guess how much easier this flank is now? Especially when this is now a better flank in this map, because look how the side is. Look at that, that's easy. So this starts to become a better and better route. So the flank options that are normally not good enough become good enough. This is why Sturgeon works on tower, for example. In fact, Sturgeon works the best. Sturgeon has a giant improvement. Because what they do on tower maps, and it's true for Hagglefish as well, but I'll show it on Sturgeon is they put the tower on the route that sucks. So, like, in Sturgeon, for example, the problem with Sturgeon Shipyard, or one of the problems with Sturgeon Shipyard, is this left side isn't good. Like, pushing from left isn't good. Like, right side, you can go from this high ground, you know? Like, you can go over here, and this right side allows you to safely go all the way over and drop on the side. Or you can go from here, or you can go from Snipe. But on the left side, you kind of just climb a wall and then you're surrounded because people are going to be here, people are going to be here, here, and you die. So this route sucks. So what Tower does is instead of making that route better, it just makes all of the team go there. And so this route, which is already good, becomes better. Now this route's better. This route's better. This long route's better. So like it doesn't change it. But it makes the other routes more possible. Now, it, the tower special advantage still sucks, but yeah, that's what makes it work. Rainmaker is basically the same thing, but without an unhealthy special advantage. And with more control where you move the Rainmaker. The problem with Rainmaker mostly lays in a few map changes. So, like, Sturgeon is another good example here. <laughs> like, for Sturgeon... What makes Rainmaker important compared to Tower is for Rainmaker, you need to have dynamic pathing. And what I mean by that is it's important if you're the Rainmaker carrier to be able to switch routes. So Sturgeon's a pretty bad Rainmaker map, even though it's a good Tower map. And you might think, like, it's Rainmaker, it's, just, it's the same thing, like it opens the sides. The problem is, let's say I want to push left. Right? Once I go here, I can't switch and then go all the way over here. Maybe for the checkpoint, but not past that. Like, once I have to push further, I have to drop and I have to go all the way over here and then go all the way. It just takes too long. The enemy team can rotate. So, like, it means is the enemy team can just stack whatever side you're pushing. If you're pushing here, it's the same thing. If you push bottom right, the enemy team will just stack here. They don't have to worry about going left because... The time it takes for you to go there is too long. In Splatoon 2, they had a sponge here. Like a sponge right here. And what the sponge did is it meant if you push it this way, you could go on the sponge and rotate here. Even faster now than you could wall jump. You could climb this and wall jump. If you push it on the left, you could jump on the sponge and go over here. It's so like what the sponge did 
on Rainmaker here is it let you dynamically switch between the two push options. But because that's gone, the switch is now too slow. And because it's too slow, you're still kind of left in, like, linear routes. Still better than zones because you still have to move. But, like, you still remove this thing. You still remove the ability to switch routes. And it also means as a Rainmaker carrier, it's less fun. You don't get to kind of mix people up as much. What you do is more limited. And that brings me to the best mode in the game. Clam Blitz. Now, Clam Blitz kind of cheats, to be fair to Clam Blitz haters. Clam Blitz is partially the best mode just because they add more things on Clam Blitz. Like, they just make the maps better on Clam Blitz. So Clam Blitz kind of cheats. If Clam Blitz had similar layouts to the other modes, I don't know if it'd be the best mode. But in this game, it cheats. So, like, remember how I mentioned how helpful that flank is on Museum? Well, it's not there in its former glory, but this... Oh my god, you can't jump and look at chat. This is a thing. It's slower, it's more vulnerable. It's still worse than Splatoon 1, but like, this is a route. If I'm over here on the left side, if I clear left, I can now go onto their plat. I can now do this. Let's get another example. <coughs> Brine water is another one, yes. Brine water is very important. Because brine normally on clams, I mean, sorry, brine normally on other modes suffers in the same way. Like, the issue with brine is, like, brine makes a step in the right direction because this, this flank exists. Being able to do this is awesome. But the problem is this flank drops you in mid. Like, this flank normally, the furthest you go is here. Which is, like, pretty close. So it's, like, better than something like Inkblot. Because this is much faster. Like, if someone hides here, they can boom and then run. Like, they can do that fast. And you can't do that on, like, Inkblot. But it still just drops you in mid. But on Clam Blitz, there's this. And now you have to watch for someone going here. Still kind of hard with the grates and stuff. But now they can go over here. Now they can actually go behind you. This is the, kind of the Kelp Dome thing. Like, the good part of Kelp Dome is being able to go here. And so when you're able to go here, it's very devastating. You get behind people, you get jumps, all that stuff. I think the devs have kind of realized that on Clam Blitz, you need to be able to have more dynamic push options, or else it's just a five-minute stalemate. Or at least I think they realized that, and then they, they designed Mincemeat, which always ends up like that. So, who knows? Like, that's why Clam Blitz works better. On top of that, Clam Blitz is a good special advantage, and you have to move. The other positive is, like, on Clam Blitz, you don't have to push as far as stuff on Tower and Rain, so you don't get disgusting spawn locks. Because, like, you don't really go this far. Now, granted, it still has its problems, because you pop a crab, and, yeah, you don't go that far, but, uh... Now they can't drop anywhere. So, like, crab, crab's still a problem. Uh, because the map's still not amazing, but, like, that makes it better. So, to summarize, does it nerf backline weapons? Yes, but the backline weapons will be fine. Like, that, that's fine. That's why they have tools. Like, that's why Leader has a mine. So, I already talked about Mickelmar. So, to give a summary, Splatoon 2 had bad maps that made zones really shit. However, the special design it had while horrible, basically acted like a giant band-aid. Like, it still didn't feel great, but the mode was back and forth, it worked, it was entertaining, it was fun to play on. Like, if you got over the crappy special design of maps, the mode still functioned. Splatoon 3's special design ripped off the band-aid. It took away the Stingray, it's nerfing the missiles, we're not having a billion global specials. But in doing so, they didn't tear away the bad maps either and so zones works really well on a map like museum on a map like flounder and in a different really good meta maybe on a map like mako or hagglefish and then mahi is just kind of weird mahi kind of works because like mahi is the third good zones map but that's kind of a topic for another time it's really weird um mahi mahi cheats as well i guess i'll talk about mahi real quick so Mahi zones us two things. First, it's the Mahi layout that's the best because it's closest to the original. 
But the second thing is Maki cheats. Maki's like, well, if teams are able to just lock out with specials so hard in the middle of the map, why don't we just make the middle of the map so tiny and so close to the enemy spawn that A, they can barely get any crabs, and B, they can regroup so fast that the crabs don't stall as much time, or whatever special does it right now. So Mahi zones is the third good zones map, because Mahi cheats. Ah, uh, like, it, it cheats at this meta. But it's also, it also has the benefit of, when the water level's down, Mahi is okay. And the water level drops, like, you're not gonna play a zones game where the wa water level doesn't drop. Like, that won't happen. And when it drops, this isn't a bad stage. This is actually a good stage here. Like, not amazing, but you have this route. You have this route. Like, you can jump up here. If you have power better, you can jump up here from that block. There's this right side. Like, this is an actual angle that matters. Like, all the stage is really missing is for the islands like this to be a bit better, and this to have the flank route from Splatoon 2. I mean, from Splatoon 1. Like, this all being actual terrain. And it would have been really good. But, like, that's why this works. But Mahi, Mahi kind of cheats. So, kind of complicated on that one. It's a bit more than I'm saying, but, like, that's why Mahi works right now. But it's still nowhere near the same tier as, like, Museum and uh, Flounder. But it's, like, that's kind of the point. Splatoon 3 Zones is an awkward spot of... It has ripped off the band-aid of Splatoon 2 specials, but it has not changed the maps. And, in fact, the maps have gone a bit more linear. Still better in other attributes, but they're more linear. There's less, like, flank options. And so we're left in an awkward spot where you need good maps. And because there's only 14 maps, there's not enough good zones maps. Like, right now, you would probably do Museum, Mako, Flounder. Maybe you'll do Mahi if Tio's want to do it. Maybe Hagglefish, even though it sucks in Crab Meta right now. Yiltel's terrible. Scorch is terrible. Undertow's terrible. Mincemeat's terrible. Inkblot's overrated as hell. It's terrible. Sturgeon's okay. Hammerhead sucks. Wahoo sucks. Rhine is okay. Like, it's just a bunch of okay at best maps. Because they don't have the options for the mode to flow. So that's kind of where we're at. And what the devs can do without fixing the maps is two things. A... They can add more, uh, they can add more good maps, like more flounder stuff. Maybe they'll port bluefin and fix bluefin spawn area, but leave the two mids, and bluefin would be a very good stage. Like, I think bluefin's a good candidate to get ported. They could bring reef back. That's the last good Splatoon 2 stage we don't have. Or even something like Manta with sw slight buffs. But the other thing they're gonna need to do, if they're not gonna overhaul the other maps, what eventually they have to do is they're going to have to balance specials like Crab. They're going to have to balance specials like this to work in a game with maps like this. Which means stuff like Crab cannot control this much space. It just can't. It doesn't work with the maps if it controls this much space. Yes, the Reef is very good. That's why I think, like, if they bring back Reef, that will help. If they bring back Bluefin and then rework the spawn region, that will help. Like, those are maps that we can use. But they won't fix- that doesn't fix the existing maps. If we tone back, like, Crab's range, then the other maps still have problems, but they become more playable because the defending team doesn't have as much power to wall out maps. And that, to me, I think is the best they can kind of do for now. So, yes, it's a maps issue, but I guess my point is, like, it has always been a maps issue. This was a problem in 2. 2 just had crutches to deal with it. The crutches are gone, but the core problem of how the maps are designed are still there. Now, in the specifics of how I'd fix every single map, and more detailed explanations on why the maps don't work in this game, and especially don't work on zones, is going to have to wait for my maps project video that I keep talking about, and I swear it's happening. It's just a very long project. But for now... I'm hoping this gave a basic overview about a bit of why the maps don't work, a bit of why they especially don't work in zones, why it was a problem in Splatoon 2, and why the other modes tend to work better. So, yeah, that's it.